7 tips for the perfect settlement in Fallout 4 right from the start. Stay tuned for that. What's up guys, I'm Frankie Boy. On this channel I am covering everything regarding open world games such as Fallout and I'm super happy to be able to make Fallout 4 videos for you guys. It's a I'm having a blast. It's just great. And uh, I really enjoy building the settlement with energy, water, storage, buildings, etc. And we're going to talk about seven things you might want to have in your head right from the start. So first things first, it's all about, yep, the food, of course. Right from the start, you will find some melons right behind this yellow house. And as soon as you have some settlers in your settlement, someone will, um, yeah, just keep on growing those you have to have someone for that but that happened automatically in my case but you need some more food and in order to provide it you need to be able to plant those seeds and where do you get those two tips for that first up head to tempines bluff and uh, that's here in the east simply head east from sanctuary follow the red truck then to museum or concord and then head left um, right between thicket excavations and uh, Templines Bluff. There are some enemies, so maybe you want to run. But yeah, there you can uh, just get some some uh, tatoes, as they are called in here, and then you can plant them. How does that work? Go to the tab resources, go to resources food, and then you can find something to, f uh, to plant. Um, yeah, you, you simply need the fitting ground for it. I can't build it on the street here, but I can build it here. And there's also like a garden you can use for it, like a, a, a separated prepared garden. It's a little bit more aesthetic in my opinion, but you don't need it. After you got those potatoes, you might uh, want to like farm something else. And I built those multi, uh, multi fruits or mud fruit plants. You can find them in Diamond City. Simply head to Diamond City and uh, yeah, here at the market you can get those. If you're already there, you might already have them for your planting. All right, tip number two regarding the water. Water is incredibly important for each and every settlement. And they tell you, yeah, get a pump. But I would say that's that's not enough, like a normal water pump. Go to resources, water, and uh, get the water purifier to actually make it clean water. Much better than just getting that that nuclear water, right? So you need to connect it to an energy source. And that's our tip number three regarding the energy, power, more energy, more power, more passion. All right. So simply you have generators in different sizes, right? For the start, go with a normal one and you can connect it with power wires to, for example, your pump. But then you think, ah, yeah, I, I don't have enough material for yet another power generator. So I want to wire it to my uh, town and in order to do so you can of course wire it with the space like hitting space and you can attach the wire go to the power go to power connectors and switches that's the no dlc um area you have the power conduit area for the dlc owners we'll talk about that uh, in a minute and yeah yeah now you can just simply build some uh, power pylons the large ones they have a larger distance to the ground now Pro tip that you definitely want to use, wires have a limited range. Simply connect your wire to your generator or other thing like you connect it to, to yet another pylon and then you want to move it again and as soon as you're on max range it will turn red. It might of course turn red because of bad underground or so but yeah now you got it on max range and that's just incredibly easy to, to work on it otherwise you would like try out and trial and error all the time to connect it. Yeah and that kind of is the lazy way to do so. I will put it back in my workshop again and yeah this way I will connect all the energy to my town. Now you got some uh, different items you can use in the power connectors and switches you got those power conduits and you can attach them to ceilings roofs etc like make them hang down make them stick from a wall or make them go up from the ground and they have like this aura of energy and if you place something that consumes energy around it eg a light bulb place it like here can we place it please it will be lit if you place it too far away, it won't be lit. So you can see, yep, that's simply too far away. But here it, it works. So remember, park wonders, they have like this area. And around that area, everything can be 
used with electric power. But there's yet another method to bring power into building and that's the DLC content. It's under power and conduit. So right here you have this incredible item and it's on the very right. It's called conduit wall pass through and you can see what it does. It's simply a conduit which you can connect to a, a cable you can see it outside here and then you get the energy inside and down here these these are pipes like electrical pipes you can connect those let's uh, grab that one you can connect those to like i don't know crossings and uh, other things you can uh, lay them on the ground or on the ceiling you have the option to um, connect them to yet another wire or to use it as a, uh, a power conduit with it and that way you can like create this halo effect of, of uh, energy like you can even play around with with uh, electrical items as you can see yeah here it's lit but here it's not lit so that's quite fun to 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 make use of and you can like see the aura of this uh, power radiator in this case that's only for the dlc owners and you can like get those uh, wire things into your houses i mean energy is simply one of the toughest things in in fallout 4 so great that you know tip number five recruiting getting new members to your settlements as you can see i have five people i have a lot of happiness and i have enough beds for one more person um if you want more persons you of course need everything supplied like defense power water is always recommended beds and happiness but there's yet another thing under power and power miscellaneous uh, you will find the recruit recruitment radio beacon and a lot of you guys might be having problems with crystals and I will tell you simply just put the recruitment beacon in your settlement and you will get people up to the maximum which is 10 people per settlement plus your charisma. If you have more charisma then you can get more settlers in your settlement. If I have five I can get like 15 people. So where do you get the crystal? Electric Callboy once did that as well. Crystal Clear, of course. This is a destination where you can get it. It's uh, western from Ten Pines Bluff on the back of a truck. Or you can loot it in the Corvega assembly plant. But you won't loot it purely. But you will loot like a camera or a microscope, etc. And you have to trash it or like uh, you have to junk it and, and reuse it. Tip number six, attacks. Getting attacked might happen to you, especially if you have low defense in your settlement or if you have a lot of stuff, a lot of people there and a lot of like things to, to steal from you. Like clean water is always something that raiders want to get. And in order to yeah, not get raided frequently. You can push down your raidability to 2% per night. So it's very uncommon that you will be raided. Every 50 nights you will get a raid in, in statistically. In order to decrease it to 2%, which is the lowest, make use of turrets, of course. Make use of lights, spotlights, traps. And also be prepared to have like a, a, a mech suit, a, a power armor in your settlement because your settlers, they will use it in case of an attack if they are close to the armor or they will make use out of weapons that lie around the city. So always think of that. In order to prepare yourself perfectly, you can grant every person in your settlement one bullet of each arm and ammo type sorry for the blooper and if you provided that then they will likely be able to shoot any weapon they can find lying around so that's like a bit of a preparation you can make use of tip number seven like building buildings just a quick tip right here i think it's extremely important to make notice of the clipping feature i had a tough time like sticking constructions together and i think it works best with the clipping feature of course activate it especially for top layers so always keep that in mind that you can clip those items together and if you do it properly you will have a straight building and not have it look like trash for the strat you can of course use prefabs which is like a, this beautiful large shack I, I think they are pretty ugly but yeah i mean the general aesthetics of fallout 4 is not the pure beauty of architecture but it's more functioning and Everything has to be reused a thousand times and it totally makes sense in this dystopic future. I'm extremely passionate about Fallout right now. I love it. I, I love to watch the Amazon series. I think it was quite fun to watch. Um, not the best series I ever watched, but it really made me want to play Fallout 4 um, again. And yeah, I'm super great full for making uh, a living out of playing video games in case you wondered this is not my main channel this is my third channel <laughs> to be honest with you guys my main channel is called Fragnard which is Fragnard 
in English. And it would be awesome to see you guys around the channel for yet another time. Feel free to check out this video. I am telling you about the top six weapons for beginners to get in that one or that video where I am uh, teaching you some beginner mistakes or tips you should avoid. Um, you shouldn't avoid those tips. You should avoid the mistakes. Feel free to check those out. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will speak to you in the next video and goodbye.